Okay, here we are. February. It's time for a arena slash indoor football update, and we have a lot to go over. Um, we actually have some more stuff that has come, you know, from some other people as well. So we'll talk about all that, you know, in just a moment here. But first off, first things first, there's some leftover stuff from January that we did not talk about. First off, the AWFC, the Yakima Canines, they're gone. Out of the league, not sure what their problem was. I suspect it's the usual stuff, you know, when it comes to, you know, the arena slash indoor game. They were replaced by a travel team called the Washington Elite. And now the season for the AWFC will run from March the 20th to June the 18th. With the three-team playoff coming after, remember they've had a three-team playoff system their entire existence. So the AWFC continue to, you know, have their track record of, you know, being all right. They're being all right. Um, the Topeka Tropics had free tryouts on January the 21st, and I believe they are using the old Bossier City turf for their games. It looks absolutely beautiful. I'm, I'm very surprised that they actually had free tryouts and stuff like that that's something that should be normalized um because you shouldn't have to pay to go try out but you know people are already spending money and time to go up to try out you know but whatever man whatever um the nif they've lost the milwaukee wolverines they also lost the indianapolis enforcers back in january so they're down to 17s, but they've announced the Developmental League. You know, they've announced a Developmental League. Isn't that great? Isn't that great? You know, you're losing teams and you announce a Developmental League. Yeah, that's not what I want to see right now from a league like this, especially a low, an even lower tier league like this. Um, so they have this new Developmental League called Indoor Developmental Football. Current teams include the Omaha Stampede, the Lincoln Menace and Western Iowa Warriors. We'll see how all that shakes out, but I can imagine I just don't see it. You know, I just don't. I just don't see the point in it. But whatever, man. Um, the Adult Development Arena Football League is a thing, apparently. They've announced two teams so far. I have no idea if they've announced the third yet or anything like that, but. The Motown Mighty Ducks, which has nothing to do with Detroit at all, is one of them, and the Chattanooga Lynx with two X's, and the Lynx claim that they will be playing in the AAL in 2023, but it just so happens that um, the AAL will not be participating in the 2022 season. Yeah, the AAL and the AAL2, you know, the AAL2 was already not a great idea from the start, you know, the AAL down to really just one team, and that was the Jersey Bearcats because everybody else has left. Yeah, everybody else has left. Um, there was nothing about Music City, so they died. They must have died. So, you know, it is what it is. Like, you know, and everybody else has either left to form their own league, left to a higher league, or died, you know. So it is what it is. So, you know, hopefully, you know, the Jersey Bearcats owners are of Jermaine and AJ. I hope y'all are watching this. I think I got y'all's names right. I'm sorry if I didn't. But I know y'all did just did an interview with the Rita Football Statement over there at his channel. I'll leave the link to that video here because uh, I watched that earlier before we made this. And so that was a pretty insightful video. Again, the AALs had a litany of problems that we've, you know, even the owners themselves have gone into. The owners of the Jersey Bear Cats and the AAL now have gone into, and we just, you know, if if you're not going to operate 2022, you know, you know, maybe maybe try and restart 2023 could be a good idea. It more than likely 85% of the time when it comes to lower level leagues, it's it's not a, it's not a good idea, not a good idea to not have a season. Personally, I would have just said, you know, you know, Jersey, y'all just. Y'all need to, you know, figure something out, you know, go somewhere for 2022 and then, you know, try and pick things back up for 2023. But, you know, a lot of things have been kind of clarified by both of the owners that they that they weren't given a chance and everything like that. So that, 
is something that's really intriguing because again you know we know about what the APFL is doing how they're doing very very low cost things we know what the AFA is doing trying to puff their chest up and say that they're you know something that they're not we know that the AIFA is doing whatever the hell they want to do you know that's three splinter leagues from just the AAL and it it's unfortunate you know it's unfortunate that somebody had to suffer in all of this and it had to be the originator you know the original league that had to suffer from all of this happening you know a lot a lot of leagues have splintered off from the AAL and it's just unfortunate that they had to pretty much set themselves up for a demise that you know it, it might be dead it might not be more than likely, I'm just going to say like 70% right now, that's where I'm leaning. 70% of me is thinking the AAL will no longer exist after 2022. You know, obviously they suspended operations for 2022. I don't think they'll be operating beyond that. So that's just me. Uh, you all can sound off in the comments and whatever, but that's just, that's just what I think. I just do not see it. Um, I do not see, you know, any owners, you know, trying to get into a game that has failed for 35 years now uh, I just don't see it speaking of I just don't see it um, Patrick Pass he was the Pirates coach during the United Bowl now he's moving on to the front office Rayshon Kaiser the DC for Massachusetts he's now the head coach so that's that's interesting you know there uh, for Massachusetts that's really all I got I haven't really touched on IFL signings at all because you know you know, I mean, I think I think we've reported a lot of, a lot of the big ones. You know, like Billings and stuff like that. What they're doing out there. Um, you know, most of the Arizona guys, I presume they're back. Most of the Sharks guys and stuff like that, I assume they're back. So a lot of pieces are in place. You know, same for the Albany Empire. You know, most most of the teams are either just signing guys that are going to be you know in local area or signing some big guys. And usually the teams with the most money sign the big guys, so there's just no point in me talking about it usually at the time. But we do have a couple of schedules that have come out. The Mississippi Raiders, they released their schedule. The AIFA has a partial schedule. No Carolina Predators on there for some reason. I don't know why. Again, this is what I was talking about earlier with the, A with the AIFA. I have no idea what in the world they're doing because they have... They have something listed, you know, and it's just, there's something that's not there. Something is not there, and it's the Carolina Predators, so I have no idea what the Predators are doing. Are they are they going to operate in 2022? Because, you know, the season starts, the season starts this month. We'll have one more update, you know, this month. I, I know I said yesterday that there was going to be, like, maybe just one update, but we're going to have one more probably later in the month. Uh, so the Raiders, they released a schedule. I believe it's 12 games, you know, four games against St. Charles, four games against Tampa Bay, and four games against the Las Vegas Kings. You know, the same Las Vegas Kings that probably don't have an arena, I think. Yeah, that team. Uh, North Texas, the Bulls have released partially their schedule. They've only released part of it. Uh, they have 12 games listed, too. But there's like five games that say League Assigned on there, so I have no idea what's going on there. But all the teams are on there for North Texas. You know, they've got they've, they've got um, Rio Grande Valley. They've got the Houston, Texas Jets or whatever. They've got West Texas. They've got Amarillo. They've got the Magnolia State team on there. You know, they've got all the teams that are in the AFA on the schedule so far. So I have no idea what that league assigned nonsense means but what I do know is that it seems like the AFA will have a 12 game season as well at the very least that's just what I'm thinking I have no idea at this moment but there needs to be some more uniformity for both leagues you know because you, again this, these are splinters from the AAL so you know of course you know things are not going to be uniform and tidy and neat and clean you know it's all it's all just a bunch of nonsense half the time Again, I think I think I know where the owners of the AL are coming from. I think I know where those two guys are coming from. So that's gonna do it for our update here. Um, we'll be back on Sunday to talk college basketball, and again, the rest of the month is gonna be slow. Like, share, comment, subscribe, do all the good stuff, and I'll see you soon.